I've got a couple of guns on the bench here. Um, these are actually both single actions. And I thought we'd do a video here on seeing what makes these guns tick for actually clicking in this case. So let's get started. And this probably won't be for real seasoned shooters of these kind of guns, but uh, for those maybe that have shot the single action, single action armies quite a bit, uh, cartridge guns, and you know cleaned them out and everything as far as barrels and and the uh, cylinders go, but never really had the things apart and not paid a whole lot of attention to what's actually going on as these guns are are cocked. This might um, um, might be informative for those kind of people and also for those that are pretty much new at these with these kind of guns. So anyway, let's take a look at the guns here. The first one is a well I wouldn't want to say a copy of an 1851 because this actually is a Colt second generation um, 1851 percussion revolver and I said the other one we have over here is a single action army style and this one is done by Uberti. Well, we'll set our single action aside here for a second and take a look at this parts box. A lot of good stuff in here. You know, from days gone by, some are broken, some are ready to be used. Anyway, let's um, attempt to explain what some of these parts are and, and how they actually um, make the guns work. So let's start here and partially break down this uh, 1851 the barrel off from it, remove our cylinder, and that allows us to see a little bit of the working mechanisms here. So we have a cylinder with uh, six shots in it, and we're going to need some way to get that thing to turn when the hammer's brought back, so that's what this little uh, kind of thing that's kind of buried in here, we can't really see it too well. It's called a hand. So i got a got one here someplace. Yeah, here we go. This this hand actually out of a uh, single action cartridge gun and here's one that has a spring broken off but that's out of, a, out of a percussion gun like the 51 Navy we've got here. Anyway this thing is located in the back here underneath the, um, uh, the hammer. It's actually attached to the hammer. It has a little, has a little uh, peg on it and that peg will go through the um, this side of the hammer fits in there. This one probably won't because it's a, off from a, a single action army and this is a percussion hammer but anyway this thing goes into here and as the hammer is is um, cocked back because of the rotation this thing will rise up catch those notches in the cylinder and make that cylinder turn. Well, there's a view of that hand down there just before we start to bring the hammer back. If we bring the hammer back that hand is going to rise up, catch those notches and, and make that cylinder turn. And here's a spring on the back side of that hand. Actually we've got a, one from a percussion here. It looks a little different than the single action, quite a bit shorter. And there's a spring Right back there and here's the one that we had though that spring is broke off that's very typical for a lot of these guns that's one of the first things that can can really wear out or go bad on them you now the spring keeps that hand coming out on the back side of this there's a slot and the back side of that hand or the spring side will ride up against that part of the metal there uh, so that as the hand is raised up it forces that hand actually out so it grabs those notches in the cylinder. The trigger has a point on it called a sear right over in here and that's there so when our hammer comes back we need a certain thing to lock that hammer in position and what that spring is that uh, sear is going to do is come into the notch the furthest notch on that on that hammer and lock that hammer all the way back and it works something like this right in there. Well, I can draw the hammer back further in this case because it'll come back like this until it actually hits the frame. Okay, now we'll explain in a minute here that's not going to be able to happen once the cylinder is locked into position by that little bolt down there because when the cylinder gets locked in that position the hand is trying to still continue to turn the cylinder but it can't move the cylinder because it's locked up 
therefore that hammer cannot come back this extra distance that can right now. So when that hammer is locked in the correct position by the sear, we also need something to at the same time lock up the chamber that's going to fire, um, align correctly with the uh, with the barrel, and that's the job of this what we call a bolt down here, and those look a little bit like like this when they're out of the gun, and that bolt will fit in the section right over here. This end piece will actually lock into those notches, or I guess I call them a notch in the cylinder notch. It'll lock into there because it's supported both sides by the frame. Once it's locked in this position, the cylinder will be um, in the firing position. And this is called a bolt spring, and it actually has two springs on it. The lower one keeps pressure on the trigger, and that allows the trigger to snap into its various um, areas here on the on the hammer. First one being the half cock position on these percussion guns, and the second one is the uh, full cock position. So that's what the lower lower arm here does on the bolt spring, and the upper one rides against the the bolt. I think it rides right up in, in this section right up in here, and that causes the bolt to remain locked into the into the uh, recesses here in the in the cylinder. And either one of those two things break, and they do quite often. You're not going to be functional. And here's an example of one that where the uh, bolt uh, bolt spring section broke off, and the bolt then would not stay locked up into the uh, firing position. So keeping one or two of these things, extra ones on hand, is always a good idea. Well, there had to be a mechanism here that would. Uh, get that bolt out of the way, I mean not locked up so we can actually turn the cylinder and that's where this cam we call it on the on the hammer comes in. And This thing has a, a bevel or a, a slant along here, otherwise it's basically kind of a, a circular peg that, that sticks out of our hammer and that's going to help us to um, to get that bolt uh, to drop back down or lower and we'll show how that works here. All right, so when the hammer gets back into the uh, cock position, uh, our bolt is, is locked up into the cylinder. And I can show you that position on the, on the hammer where the bolt is. Take a look at that for a second. I'll represent this position right down here where that arm on the, on the bolt has slid off of this section of the cam and dropped right down to here. Okay, as the hammer falls back down yeah, when the shot's being taken, we'll lower that kind of slow here. The bolt remains locked up like it should, but what's gone under, what's gone inside, gone on inside this thing, is that that is that that hammer. Hand out of the way here, as that hammer has been lowered, shots fired. This arm here on the on the cam has ridden up that slanted area and dropped into this position, and both is still remains up. But as I start to cock the hammer back, then that bolt wants to lower, so our cylinder can actually turn, and it's going to do that because this arm on the on the bolt is going to ride on the side of that cam and that's going to cause the bolt to lower down so that the actual cylinder can, can turn. I think it's worth mentioning that these are wear sections on the gun that can um, wear with, with use and one of the things that can happen here is that this arm that rides against the cam on that bolt spring can actually get wore down some after, after uh, using it for quite a while, become a little bit shorter and also that section on the cam, I've seen where, where these will wear down some. And what happens there is that when this can slip off the cam um, sooner, because it's uh, either shorter or the cam is wore some there, that's going to cause our, our bolt here to, um, to pop up sooner. So when it normally pops up right about there, 
that's going to pop up just a little quicker than that and that's going to cause on the cylinder let's say instead of that bolt coming up into the in that pre-notch that's located right about here you know it may, may start popping up in this section so the gun's going to still function probably it'll just um, be that there'll eventually be more wear on this on this section here of the gun or the cylinder of the gun What we'll do next here is try to explain a little bit about those clicks that we hear when we're cocking the hammer back on our single actions. And we'll go through the percussion one here first and then we'll take a look at our single action army cartridge gun. Alright, we've said that the purpose here of the um, trigger spring would be to keep pressure, pressure um, of the sear here against, against that uh, hammer. And as the hammer is drawn back, Let's assume this is just fired a fired a shot. As the hammer is drawn back, the first click you're going to hear is that sear dropping off that lobe part of the hammer and into the uh, half half cock position where you load and and um, turn your cylinder and such. And right about in here someplace is where that bolt is going to come up and contact the bottom of the of the cylinder and you're going to hear a click when that happens. So just before the trigger sear snaps into the full cock position, the hammer is rotated far enough to allow this section of the of the uh, bolt spring that rides up against the cam to slide off the side of that cam and the bolt spring then pressure of the bolt spring causes that bolt to snap up and hit the bottom of the cylinder. That's going to cause a, a click sound and that bottom of the cylinder section that it's going to hit into called that pre-notch pre -notch section should be right about in here somewhere. So how many clicks should we hear on this uh, percussion style gun? Well the first one will be dropping into the half cock position, that's one click. And they said about in this section someplace we'll hear the bolt coming up against the, the cylinder. That's two clicks. And if they both drop in the position at the same time here, we'll hear a third click. And that's all we're going to get is three. If the bolt was coming up um, a little too soon, then we're going to hear this will be our third click. So you're dropping into the full cock position and then continuing to draw the hammer back like this, we'll get a fourth click when the bolt drops into its into its lock position on the on the cylinder. And then what happens is at that point you can't cock the hammer back anymore because we're locked up and you'll um, let it drop a little bit forward where the hammer will um, lock back into the sear into its cock position and you'll be ready to fire the gun. Now, I'm not too concerned if those last two don't occur at the same at the same instant. Um, a lot of these guns, that's just the way it's going to be. Well, one idea that some folks may have had or have had is to lengthen the the arm here, and that'll cause the cylinder to get a little farther ahead when the bolt drops up, and things might be, you know, that might work. Um, problem that I can see with that is that if you also lengthen this, or let's say replace it with a longer one. When you go to cock the gun back after it's fired, that longer longer arm is going to cause that cylinder to start rotating sooner and what happens if that bolt isn't completely out of the way at that point? Uh, the cylinder is going to be locked up and you won't be able to um, ear that hammer back at all. So that may not be the best way to deal with, deal with that. I think the, the longer sear here is probably the answer to it and getting a, a, a trigger that has a little longer sear and then fitting that in um, just right takes a lot of times in and out of the gun but that might be the uh, best way to do that if you gotta if you gotta go go for it and otherwise I kinda believe if it isn't if it's working and it isn't broke then let's just leave it alone now pretty much everything we've talked about also applies to our cartridge uh, single action army there is a, a difference in it and I'm gonna point that out Here's the hammer that um, 
be typical of these these guns and if I can focus in on the notches here get that set up a little better so we can kind of see those we're gonna have an extra extra notch on the on the single action armies and that one up here is kind of called our our safety notch when the sear falls into that and that would be right in in that position that uh, keeps the hammer from going in and, and having the firing pin set off the primer in that in that cartridge so that's what this one's about otherwise we've got the half half cock position right about in here and then quite a ways down further we'll see our full cock position on it so these are basically the two that exist on the percussion revolvers and this and that the third one giving this one uh, definitely one more click and we're kind of saying with our percussion guns everything is aligned correctly we're going to get three clicks out of this but with our single action gun we're going to hear four all right we got our Colt back together here, our 51 Navy, and of course our single action. Let's roll back this towel here and see if we can get some click sounds. If I do these on the on the bench here, we can that'll kind of amplify the sound. So let's do the 51 Navy first. There's four. Let's hear it again. person isn't very loud. All right, we're getting four from that gun. And that means we don't have exactly perfect alignment, but if we notice, she's still locked up and ready to fire. So um, no, it, no real issues there. All right, let's go with our single action that seems to have the things the way they should be. Four. And that's locked up. So things are working out um, exact as far as the sear dropping into the into the uh, full cock position, and also the bolt coming up and and hitting this um, bolt lock lug at the same time. Right there. So we're hearing four and not five. So will we always get four? Let's try a second gen Colt here. Make sure our hammer's all the way to the firing fired position. Let's go with this one. Four and locked, ready to fire. Let's try another another one here. This is not an actual Colt, but it's a very very nice gun. Let's try this one. Well, I'm here in five. Let's do her again. A little faster this time. There's five for sure. So we can get five with these. Well, we'll call it quits now, and maybe you have a better understanding of what's going on inside these single actions, and we hope you've enjoyed the video.